with raspberry season right around the corner. Let's make some white chocolate raspberry scones that are gluten-free, dairy-free, and vegan. Let's get right to it. So grab your mise en place, and when you're ready, meet me back here. So the first thing that we're going to do is to measure out our coconut oil. And I found a great trick for this is to take our coconut oil and pop it into the freezer and then grate it. So take your ball of coconut oil once you've measured it out, use a spatula and kind of shape it into a ball like this. Then we're just going to pop it into the freezer. Next, we're going to take our frozen raspberries. I'm going to use about a tablespoon of arrowroot starch and this helps the raspberries not to stick together and allows them to stay frozen a little longer while we're mixing our dough. Adding the arrowroot starch or you can use tapioca starch will help to make sure that the raspberries don't turn our dough pink. So we just give it a little mix just to cover the raspberries completely. So try not to touch the raspberries with your fingers at all because the more we add heat, the more they're going to melt. So what I like to do is just kind of take the back of my spoon and just crush them a little. So there's a few kind of pieces of raspberries and then there's a few whole raspberries in your scones. It's quite lovely this way. But as you can see, it's going to start to melt very quickly. Then we're going to place them into the freezer before we put it all together. Making sure all of your ingredients are nice and cold is one of the keys to helping these scones have a beautiful rise. So next, you'll take your chopped white chocolate. If you'd like to make your own vegan white chocolate, just check out my video here to show you how. It is so delicious and so worth the time. It hardly takes any time at all. And chopped it up and away we go. So we'll place this back in the freezer now. Next, we're going to mix our dry ingredients. So just grab a large bowl and add in your crazy good gluten-free all-purpose flour. If you have yet to mix your flour, check out my recipe here and it will show you exactly how to do it. It's very simple and it is so good. And there's a lot of recipes as well, which I'll put a description in the link below that you can use with this flour. So I've pre-measured everything in my mise en place. So we're just going to add our flour, our baking soda, which everything has been pre-sifted and some cane sugar, sea salt. Then just grab a spatula and give it a mix. So once it's all incorporated nicely, then we're actually going to chill our flour as well. This just helps everything to stay nice and cold while we're making it. And what that actually does is it allows the coconut oil to melt while it's baking. So it doesn't, it sort of in those first few minutes allows it to rise without the coconut oil making it go splat. So now we're going to place our dry ingredients into the freezer to cool while we preheat our oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. The next thing we're going to do is mix our gel. So we're going to use coconut milk as our vegan option for these scones. This coconut milk is my homemade coconut milk. And if you'd like to learn how to make this in the next 10 minutes, just check out my video here and you'll have it whipped up in 10 minutes. So we're going to pour in the coconut milk. And just make sure that it's room temperature. You don't want your coconut milk to be hardened, but you also don't want it to be warm because if it's warm, it will melt some of those other ingredients that we're trying to keep cool. We're going to add the vanilla extract as well. Give that a little whisk. And then just add to that your psyllium husk. I'm using whole psyllium husks and I like to use that for this recipe. But if all you can get your hands on is some ground psyllium husk, just use the same wheat and you should be fine. So you're just going to mix that up and we don't wanna let it sit for too long, but we want it to sit for about five minutes while our flour is cooling down in the freezer. It will just start creating a little bit of a gel. And the psyllium husk is our binder for this recipe. If you can't consume psyllium husk, please don't worry. You can use a combination of ground chia seeds and flax seeds. If you use too much flaxseed though, it will make a very strong, overwhelming flavor. So make sure that you blend the two. You just need to use some kind of a binder to help bind the ingredients together. You can see it's already beginning to thicken. The psyllium husk is already starting to do its magic and is beginning to absorb the water. And then it becomes like a gel and glues things together. So now that that's started gelling, grab your dry mixture out of the freezer and your coconut oil, and you'll notice it is completely frozen solid. So just scoop it out and 
grab yourself a grater. And I like to use the big side here and just be careful of your fingers and just grate it. And you want to do this quite quickly as it's going to start melting very quickly in your hands. So you don't want it to heat up. So just kind of spread it out. I tend to put a few grams extra before I put my coconut oil into the freezer. That way I don't have to shred it right down to the bottom. I can just keep the extra and I don't have to worry about my fingers. Your coconut oil will have warmed up slightly, but don't worry. We're going to put this back into the freezer for a few minutes afterward. So now you can rub that into your hands. So just grab a spoon and give it a little mix and just incorporate that coconut oil that's now been shredded up and it's now going to be broken up nicely and incorporated all the way through. If you find there's still a couple of chunks, just use your spoon just to break them up. So once it's all mixed together, then we're ready to add our wet ingredients and create our dough. Now we're simply just going to add our gel that we've mixed into our dry ingredients. And then we'll just fold it in. So you don't want to let the psyllium husk gel mixture solidify too much or this mixing can be quite difficult. So for this one, we just fold it in gently until it's all incorporated. And you might be thinking, oh my goodness, this is way too dry. It's not going to work. And it'll work. Don't worry. Just keep folding it in. And what I always do before I start using my hands is I just rinse my hands in some nice cold water. With these gluten-free ones, I find you really have to squeeze and massage to get it to come together nicely. So just keep working the dough with your hands until it comes, it starts forming a nice ball. And try to keep your hands nice and cold. If you have really warm hands, you could just keep a bucket of ice water beside you and just keep your dipping your hands and drying them so that you're not warming up the dough too much. Just ensure that the dough stays nice and cold as you can see, it eventually comes together quite nicely. And just knead it for a couple of minutes. Now you can either at this point wrap it in plastic wrap or you can put it in a container and we're going to refrigerate the dough. This is a huge benefit. I refrigerate most of my dough in order to not only chill it and make it easier to work with, but also to help improve the flavor. So I'm going to just wrap this and place it into the refrigerator for 15 minutes. Once your dough has been chilling for at least 15 minutes, then just prepare your surface for your dough. I usually lay down my tray that I'm going to be baking on and on top of that parchment paper, but because that's so noisy for filming, today I'm just going to show you with plastic wrap. And of course you can always do it this way too, if you prefer but I'll show you a little clip of me doing it with the parchment paper as well. So just unwrap your dough and it should be nice and cool. And you can either reuse your piece or have a new one if you prefer. And just make sure it's completely covered. And you can either use a rolling pin or your hands or a combination. So you just, I typically just press down first with my hands and it will kind of crack and like most gluten-free dough does. And don't worry, just massage it together. And right now we're just going to be working the dough slightly, trying not to warm it up too much. And we're going to roll it out to about a half an inch to even a quarter inch thick. And we're going to add our raspberries and chocolate. So just making sure it stays covered so you're not touching it with your hands. And it is better, I find, with the parchment because it doesn't heat up as much when you're touching it. So once you've rolled it out to the desired thickness, then you're going to grab your frozen raspberries and chocolate out of the freezer. So try not to touch the frozen raspberries with your hands. Just loosen it slightly if it's stuck to the edge of your bowl with your spoon. Make sure you can easily get those out and try to work fairly quickly. We want everything to stay frozen because raspberry season is coming up. I'm so excited to be able to use fresh raspberries. So what I recommend if you have raspberries in your garden is just to take them, lay them out on a tray and put them in the freezer for 15 minutes before starting the process. And it is so delicious with fresh raspberries. 
So we're just going to sprinkle them on top of the dough. And usually what I do is just sprinkle it on top of half of this dough, spread them out. I've tried many different techniques and I find this is the best way to prevent my dough from turning pink and just to have the beautiful little bits of raspberry throughout. Then we'll take our frozen chocolate bits. Homemade vegan chocolate is so delicious in this recipe. It is my family's favorite. And just spread them out evenly. Try not to touch with your fingers as much as you can. So normally I would grab the parchment edge, but if you're using plastic wrap like me, just grab it this way, fold it in half. And then what I do, just make sure you don't lose any little bits. You want all that goodness is I just sort of pinch the edges together. Squeeze my dough into a ball. So you have to kind of readjust, whoops, here and there. And if it pops open, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. But this way you're not touching those frozen raspberries with your fingers and it stays that lovely color. And if you flip it over, usually some of the raspberries have come out. And now we're going to roll it onto our trays. Grab your tray lined with parchment and then you're just going to place the dough on. So we're going to unwrap our dough. Place it with the side that you like the appearance of on top. Then you can just use your hands and smooth it out as best you can. I like to use the plastic wrap for this just because it allows me to massage it in so that it keeps nice and pretty looking. There's no cracks. Now the plastic wrap, if you have some raspberries on top, can start to look dirty. I have my other piece from earlier and I'll just switch and use that. Now, once you've massaged out the cracks, then you can just use your roller if you have one. And we're just going to roll it into a circle. The reason I like to do it on the parchment paper is then you don't have to move anything. It's already on your tray and it's ready to go into the oven. We're going to put our dough back into the fridge to let it chill. And I have found this to be one of the most key steps that I do is all these different refrigerations because it allows my dough to gain flavor, but also to retain its shape. So once it's about an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. Then just repair any edges. Trying not to handle the dough too much and make it a nice circle. If there are any cracks in the edges, you can just massage it. And because all of the frozen things are inside, it doesn't make much of a difference, which is lovely. It doesn't make our dough pink. Like I said, you'll probably have a few pink spots and that actually just looks pretty. So once you've made it into a nine inch round, about 22 or so centimeters, remove the plastic wrap or parchment. And then I like to use my bench scraper, but you can use a knife, a sharp knife, and you're just going to cut it into two equal halves. I like to keep a cloth around because if you get some buildup on here and you wipe it clean, that will also prevent your dough from turning pink. So next we'll cut it in half again. For this recipe, I like to make about eight scones, but you can make as little, them as little or as big as you like. And because the dough is nice and cool, it works so incredibly well. So now what I do with my bench scraper is I just slide it under and then just pull them out slightly, trying not to handle them too much with my hands. And we wanna separate them by about a quarter of an inch. And you only want about a quarter of an inch because you want them to be close enough together that they'll support one another as they're rising, but not so close that they blend into one another while baking. The last step is just to sprinkle it with a little bit of cane sugar. And if you'd like, you can also brush the tops with a little bit of coconut milk if you prefer. That will help to brown the tops. Now we're going to take these scones and just cover it gently with plastic wrap. And we're going to chill this again for 15 minutes. So once your scones have been refrigerated for at least 15 to 20 minutes, 
Then just remove your plastic wrap and place it on into the oven. Bake your scones on the middle rack at this temperature for five to seven minutes where you'll see the initial rise. Then turn your oven down to 325 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for an additional 10 to 14 minutes until nice and golden. Oh, they smell so incredibly delicious. Oh my goodness, they smell so good. This is the part that is so incredibly difficult because you just want to dive in right away. But you need to make sure to wait at least 15 minutes for it to cool because gluten-free baking really does take time to set. And if you try to pick it up right now, it will crumble and fall apart. And it'll be a little too hot to eat anyways. We like to eat them though as soon as they've cooled enough that you can pick it up and it is completely solid. I'll show you when it's ready. When you set it down, just be really, really gentle that you don't slam it down on the counter because it can lose some of its height too as it's still setting. We like to eat our scones plain, but if you like to have a little bit of a glaze on top, you can try creating a simple glaze with some homemade icing sugar mixed with a little bit of your coconut milk. So just mix them till they become a, a paste and then you can gently drizzle them on, but you need to wait until it's completely cool my family just cannot wait. We like to eat them nice and warm as the chocolate melts in your mouth and it's so delicious. So set a timer for 15 minutes and as soon as it's ready, dig on in. Once your scones have been cooling for 15 minutes on the wire rack, then you can simply separate them. Just make sure they will have expanded. I think I separated mine a little too much in my distraction filming. So if you have them a little closer, you'll have even more of the separation to do. But again, if you have any wet on your bench scraper or your knife, just wipe it off. And just press down in between to make sure that they're nice and well separated. They do need to be cooked close together so that they have the support of one another to rise. Oh, they smell so incredibly delicious. To plate them, I just like to use my bench scraper and lift them up. That way you can keep your hands free. They look so delicious. And now, of course, for the taste test. As you can see, you can lift it up really easily. It's all, it's sticking together nicely. And let's take a bite and see. Hmm. Oh my goodness. You can see it's crispy on the outside and beautifully fluffy on the inside. I hope you've enjoyed making these incredibly delicious, easy to make, gluten-free, dairy-free, and also vegan white chocolate raspberry scones. Enjoy. White raspberry chocolate Oh.